In 2024, storytelling has become a bit of a buzzword in the marketing industry. And for good reason. People love high quality stories. We look to big brands like Patagonia and Yeti and the North Face for their branded documentary work. They're not just telling stories about their products, they're telling stories about real people doing things they love in the outdoors. And those missions and those values and those ethos of the brand can be communicated through the athletes and through the people in these films. Branded documentaries are a great way to get people involved in the storytelling of a brand. And that's why we're here. We love good stories. That's why we're on YouTube. People love watching stories unfold or you're here listening to me talk about the theory of storytelling. And of course, storytelling is a complex, somewhat vague term. So we're gonna break it down in this video and I'm gonna explain why less is more in high quality storytelling. Truth is nothing like old. I don't want to get too bogged down in the statistics of things, but statistics show that people love getting emotionally connected to brands. We've always talked about now that people are smart consumers and they research what they buy and they care about the companies that they support with their dollars. Because of these statistics, we now know that customers will buy from a brand that they feel emotionally connected to. Studies have even shown that it's four times as more likely for a customer to buy from a specific brand that they feel emotionally connected to. And how do we get emotionally connected to brands? Well, through storytelling. And this has had a ripple effect for a lot of people, but especially for me. I'm a branded documentary filmmaker. My work started out pretty small. Most companies that were wanting to do branded documentaries years ago were seen as innovative and on the forefront of the industry. Now, many brands are wanting to tell real stories about their customers or their athletes or their ambassadors having experiences in the outdoors with their products. Of course, I'm in the outdoor industry, but stories like this are happening in the fashion industry. They're happening in the tech world. It's happening everywhere. And with this rise of the branded documentary style, there also becomes a rise in expectations. And because of this rise happening everywhere, there's not just increased expectations on views and numbers and return on investment. There's also an increased expectation to have better storytelling. And that's why we're here. We're here to talk about how to tell a meaningful story and how to create a meaningful, memorable, branded documentary that people can watch and they can enjoy for years to come. And it all boils down to one thing, emotion. Emotions in storytelling is nothing new. Emotions in storytelling is why we love movies and TV and stories in the first place. We wanna be transported to another world. But how do we do that? How do we create an emotional response in a viewer? It's easy to get caught up in the technical aspects of creating a three act structure or there are seven archetypes of a story, but really ultimately it comes down to who are these people and what are their values? I've made documentaries about a wide range of things in the outdoor industry. A mountain guide getting his international mountain guiding certification. A blind ice climber trying to find freedom in the outdoors through ice climbing and skiing. I dream of a world where anyone who wants to climb can climb and anyone who wants to take up space in any other way in the outdoors has the safety and freedom to do so. I made a film about a group of veterans trying to use nature as a form of recovery from PTSD and other injuries that they faced while in service. I feel like this is like a launch pad, like getting here. I even made a documentary about two high school teachers who, with their students, built a giant wooden canoe and raced it 70 miles in the ocean. All of these films, on the surface, are about what? The outdoors. But deep down, they're about so much more. For the mountain guide, he had to really put his ego aside after decades of guiding experience and learn how to ski. That was the final discipline he needed in order to get to where he needed to be. And although I like to think I'm a charismatic person, he says it a lot better than I could. And so at the age of 40 years old, I started skiing. And learning how to ski is hard. I put a ton of time into it and I finally just now, four years later, feel like I've totally got this. Why not learn how to ski when you're 40? That makes perfect sense. <laughs> you can sense that emotion. And when you watch that clip, there's nothing complex happening. I asked him, hey, what do you think about being 40 and learning how to ski now? And that was his response. You get an emotional response from somebody having a real emotional experience. You're not asking yourself what camera I shot on, what was the audio equipment that I was using, did I use a light, what brand was my tripod, oh, how did I fly a drone in that area? Of course these technical details matter, but at the end of it, we're really trying to let emotion thrive. And that gets me to my second point. Camera technology and camera brands don't matter for creating meaningful stories. If storytelling is about communicating emotions, there's many ways to communicate emotion. And as filmmakers, we like to do it through cameras. 
but authors do it through their pens, artists do it through their brushes. And of course, those tools may be the computer that they use to type up their draft or the canvas that they use to finally portray their art to the world. That might matter a little bit, but that's not why those artists are famous or why that author is getting recognized for his work. In the same way, the camera that I use or the microphone that I use doesn't dictate whether my film gets into film festivals or successfully communicates the emotional response that I'm trying to get across in my film. Ultimately, it's about having these emotional responses and characters that you find are likable and you wanna see them succeed at whatever it is that they're trying to do. And that brings me to my third point. Good characters communicate good stories. Whether or not a character is likable has a huge influence on a film. The first question that I always ask whenever I do a test screening for my documentaries is, is this character likable? If the character is likable and you as an audience member want to see that character succeed, you will have a successful story. I invited them to this thing. None of them hesitated. They were all like, I'm there for you. And they're here, they're rafting with me. Some of them don't know how to be in the water. But they're doing it anyways. They're bringing me beers, they're loving me, and that's why I love these boys. They know how to love me. <laughs> if that character is likable and you want to see that character succeed in their journey, you are setting yourself up for success. In branded documentary pieces, the characters are what drive the story forward. I like to call them character-driven documentaries. We have one person or maybe a group of people pursuing a goal or going on a journey or an expedition together. The emotions that these characters are experiencing are the emotions that I, as the filmmaker, am trying to drive into the audience. When it comes to branding and when it comes to marketing, the complexities of character interactions or the complexities of the camera or the budget or the marketing spend or how much we wanna communicate certain emotions through certain brand values, it can get a lot and it can get overwhelming. Like I said, with increased budget, increased views comes increased expectations for better stories. But as you've seen, a good story is simple. A good story has emotions and it has characters and it doesn't matter what camera or how you tell it. And like I said in the beginning of this video, increased budgets and increased expectations allow for a complex environment for creating a documentary. You might have multiple camera people, you might have a crew involved, you might have a marketing spend where you have to hit certain key performance initiatives. There might be moments in this marketing process that you're wondering, why didn't we just shoot a normal commercial? But I promise you that creating an emotional response in your audience is way better and way more long lasting and meaningful. And after that video is done and after the audience member closes their phone and they are thinking about buying a jacket or a shoe, maybe they'll turn to you. Maybe they'll turn to the brand that is sharing a story that they resonate with. For me personally, I love supporting companies that have green initiatives that are doing great work in the environment because I love supporting people that are supporting things that I love. And you might have things that you love too. And that's worth celebrating through these films. If you have a good character experiencing real emotions, that can go a long way in creating a branded documentary that can help communicate your values and your mission as a brand. When you're creating these larger scale branded documentaries, complexity will happen. There's no one right way to tell a story. And in that nuance, I think is where art gets created. That's where a good character with real emotion can really draw out an empathetic emotional experience in your audience. These potential customers, these consumers will look at good storytelling and think, hey, I want to be invested in that brand. I stand for environmentalism or sustainability or, oh, I love getting out into the big mountains and feeling technical in what I'm doing and I love adventure and I love excitement or, hey, I love being around my family. Whatever it is that the values that you're trying to communicate as a brand are, regardless of how you do it, what matters is that you're doing it well. And good storytelling is simple. Good storytelling isn't about the biggest camera or the fanciest lights, or the most remote locations. You can go anywhere, you can meet anybody, and still tell a good story. And at the end of it all, when the screen fades to black, and the phone gets shut down, and the customer walks away from this viewing experience, do you want them to be left with this emotion of feeling like they just saw another piece of content? Or do you want them to have an emotion that is long lasting, that will stick with them forever? Because for me, I'm trying to tell stories of people that last. In my films, I want people to feel real emotions that 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 years down the line, someone can watch this film again and feel the same thing. It's been all mental since like for so long. It's been such an interesting experience. You find out like you can go further than you think. One last effort. Because regardless of the trends that are happening or the social media landscape that's ever changing, what never changes is good storytelling. 
And as a brand, if you can communicate a timeless piece that captures the soul of what you're trying to accomplish as a brand, whether it's sustainability or family-oriented values, a branded documentary can allow you to do that. For the next piece of content you're creating, and we're adding to the noise of endless amounts of scrolling and doom scrolling, pause for a second and think to yourself, what can I do differently? If I do less now, if I make my film simpler and focus on emotions, will that bring more return in the future? Will that bring more customers? Will that bring more emotion and more potential characters into more documentaries in the future? The dance trend may change, the social media platform we're on may change, but good storytelling will last forever. If any thoughts you want to add, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Hit that like button if you found this video valuable. Subscribe, new videos coming every Wednesday. I love you, I'm proud of you for learning something new today, or maybe just showing up and trying to get yourself better at storytelling. Have the best day ever. See you in the next video.